This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. This job would be great if it wasn't for the fucking customers. We're always this stupid it is you take lessons. Just calm down. Oh, fuck you! You can't handle the truth! This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. In other words, be nice, asshole. Yep. Lucky me. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome to another episode of Q is in Cucumber. This is the podcast where we point and laugh at stupid customers, companies, and co-workers alike. I'm Lara Mack. And I'm Tanya Edwards. Listen to that. We took a month off. Yes. Oh. And we're back. Tanya's a little exhausted. <laughs> Tanya is a lot exhausted. Yeah. We had a nice little break. Okay, so we have to uh, talk about the beginning of the Elizabeth Holmes trial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This bitch. This fucking bitch. I swear to God. <laughs> it's and finally she, here. <laughs> she looks so haggard. Oh, God. Yeah. The so, uh, we, in our last episode where we recorded together, we talked about it, and she was about to have the quote unquote baby. Yeah. Her new Nerf ball. Yeah. So, <sighs> apparently, that happened. But the this week was jury selection. And there are a couple of little pieces of news over the past few weeks. So, we'll be backing up. It's really funny because now that the trial has started, Mm -hmm. uh, people are going out and looking for this story, right? Uh So we're getting a ton of new listeners. Oh, like well, welcome. Right. So I watched a video that 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 lawyer lady I told you about on YouTube, Emily D. Baker, did on it. Uh And um, I commented like, yep, we did a three-part series on this. And apparently because of my comment, we had a couple of people go over from her channel and watch our episodes Uh Um, and I wanted to give uh, a quick shout out to somebody on YouTube if I'm saying this right Alexandra Trigle Trigle left a lot of nice comments Um, and she even went back to my comment on Emily's video and Uh she was like y'all I watched it or I listened to it it's great so well researched like she was very (laughs) sweet so thank you Alexandra I really appreciate it so couple things let me pull up i grabbed a couple of articles that i wanted to touch base on here so let's see here if you remember there were two things well there was a couple okay so let's back up so i know we've harped on it we have not been able to get past this but we still just (laughs) i think the both of us just cannot wrap our brains around (laughs) The lost database. Like, we really cannot get past this. Because it's not something you can get past. It's just, if, it's so stupid. So, let me just say, this is, and, and I don't, by no means do I work for a company that's super tech savvy. Um, or has the millions or, of so-called dollars like this hoe had, right? Mm-hmm. But, for instance, uh, last week, my computer took a total shit. Right. An absolute dookie. Right. Um, and I called IT, let them know what happened. We tried a few things. Bring in your computer. Brought in my computer. By the time I got there, a couple hours later, there was a computer there for me mm-hmm. that they had gone through and just downloaded all of my files onto. Right. So that I could work. About three or four days later, they called me. They were like, hey, your computer's fixed. Came, got it. Everything was on there. All of my files, mm-hmm. all of the databases that I use, mm-hmm. all of the stuff I use for my reporting, my saved stuff. So, and and this this is this is not a super high tech company that you would think like, oh, this is really complicated, right? Like this is if they're able to do that, why I mean, is this? Why tech were they company? not a, right? Right? They they just can't do it. Can't, Give me a fucking break. Thank you. Give me a fucking break. And then to, for them, if you remember, kind of backing up to our, to our last update on this, then part of her argument was, well, you know, it's a bummer for us, too, because there was proof on there that, that this did work. It's so sad it's, that it doesn't... We can't have it either. It really sucks for us. Bullshit. Bullshit. It was your Shit. ticket out of this. Or Thank so you. you thought, because hopefully you. there will be a group of jurors that see through your milly mouth bullshit and realize that this was just some made up Ponzi scheme. I honestly think if I were if I were in a jur- if I were on a jury and it was a, like just I didn't know anything about this story, but you told me that a 
tech company, okay, lost a database. I don't think I'd be able to get past it as a juror. <laughs> this is like the most incriminating thing you could possibly say to me. Right. Like what? They did what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I I would be fucking lost. Yeah. So she was. They, she's been trying to get information from that database s- suppressed at trial, right? Because mm-hmm. she's like, well, we don't have the original. You guys can't access it. So anything related to that database, we can't talk about. That's what she wanted. I feel like anybody who does business in this day and age... Mm-hmm. has, like, you know, they have their server. They mm-hmm. have, like, their super servers, right? And we moved our server. Right. We moved servers last week while nobody was working. Right. Um, Moved everything, got it all up and running. Mm-hmm. Again, much smaller company, a right. hell of a lot less money. Mm-hmm. We didn't lose anything. Thank but you. I was asking the IT guys, I was like, so what did you guys do to make sure, like, you know, just out of curiosity to make sure, like, yeah. And we weren't going to lose every fucking thing. Right. And he was like, we backed up the backup. There you go. I was like, oh, okay. And then it got me thinking, like, isn't that normal business practice? And he was like, well, I would fucking hope so. Yeah, well, y- you may want to talk to this quote unquote unicorn amazing company. <laughs> unicorn. That's what they yeah. call It's ridiculous. Oh, my God. It, it shit's rainbow. So this article was from a couple weeks ago, but uh, at the beginning of August. But once again, we took August off. So we didn't get to talk about it. So sorry, we're a little behind the curve here. Okay, so this is from CNBC by somebody named uh, Yasmin Corum. I think that's how you say your last name. Um, So it says Elizabeth Holmes, the embattled former CEO of blood testing startup Theranos, was dealt a major blow on Wednesday when a judge ruled that customer complaints and blood testing results basically from the database can be used as evidence in her upcoming fraud trial. The fact that you even asked. Right. Why did they have to ask that? Well, the fact. It's evidence. The fact that you're like, can we just not have those people who got the bad results, testify. Would that be possible? Okay, so I'm a murderer, but, you know, I know I I tried to kill you. I stabbed you in your ear 17 times, but... (sighs) And Avery witnessed it, but, I mean, do we really need to hear from Avery? Right, it's not, you know, it's not really that big of a deal. Okay. So stupid. Assholes, I swear. Oh but my, that just this, shows you what entitlement is. Oh, just too. wait. That's just wait. There's it is entitlement, but this uh, uh yeah. Wait wait until the big thing that came out this last week. Wow. Uh because we finally know what her defense is gonna be. Oh fuck me. What? Because remember we were like debating like are you gonna say no it did work? Are you gonna say you were crazy? What are you gonna say? It, we'll get there, but we need to finish going through this part. In my dreams, it worked, and... <laughs> Thank you. When a judge ruled that customer complaints and blood testing results can be used as evidence in her upcoming fraud trial, Holmes's lawyers have argued the customer complaints should be excluded from the trial due to the failed preservation of the crucial database known as the laboratory information system that contained three years' worth of accuracy and failure, failure rates of Theranos' blood tests. Okay... I won't say it again. The potential usefulness of the list database is speculative and no exculpatory value was apparent at the time Theranos decommissioned the list database. U.S. District Court Judge Edward DeVilla said in his ruling Wednesday. Holmes has claimed that her defense is hampered by the loss of millions of blood test results in the database. However, the judge ruled there is no evidence to prove that, quote, Th- that the list database contains accuracy data for all tests run, adding, quote, no conclusions regarding accuracy should be drawn from the list data alone, suggesting that the database would not provide a fulsome record with which accuracy could be definitively determined. Holmes's defense team and the U.S. Attorney's Office have spent, have spent months finger-pointing over who's to blame for the missing list database. <sighs> All y'all's no, fault. No, you it's, you lost it. It's all y'all's fault. Stupid. I'm sorry. We've talked about this. The government was fucking stupid. And yeah, no, just uh, no. 
Um, prosecutors say Holmes and her executives purposefully dismantled the database. Oh, dismantled. Remember, they didn't like destroy. Yeah, they dismantled it. Decommissioned was the term they wanted. Like, I guess that sounds better than smashed it to smithereens. Exactly. <laughs> that's what they did. It sounds better than... Um, Got rid of evidence. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. <laughs> I would prefer that term, too, if right, it were me. right. Um, <laughs> disemboweled. <laughs> disemboweled. <laughs> I don't know why that word came to mind. I really don't. Um, they handed investigators a useless duplicate after a federal federal grand wait, jury. Wait, wait. You said a you, you. So they just passed off some some fake shit. Well, you remember they gave them the the drive that supposedly that contained had, it. Nothing. But there was there was no password. There was a password, right. but they don't know what the password is. Right. And then the government right. didn't ask for it. Right. Like, good lord. But Holmes blames prosecutors calling the missing database an investigative failure, adding in an earlier filing with the court that the quote, the reason that the government has built its case on this teetering card house of irrelevant evidence is that it lost, or worse, did not want to analyze pre-indictment the actual evidence of testing <laughs> Wait, results in this case. What did you say, this teetering card house? That's of- what it says. They didn't put house of cards. They said a teeter. I can read, I promise. It literally says uh, a teetering, teetering card, card house. house, not house of cards. Yeah. The term is not but card I just, house. Um, I just, right, right. But I'm just laughing at the teetering card house. I mean, even teetering house of cards, like, yeah, it still sounds <laughs> ridiculous. Like everything's just been run amok. <laughs> exactly. Um, da, 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 da. The judge's ruling also rejected Holmes's request to exclude findings from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid <laughs> Services that proved to be damaging to the company. Holmes was once a Silicon Valley darling, et cetera, et cetera. Holmes is facing a dozen wire fraud and conspiracy to commit wire fraud charges, along with her COO, Ramesh Sunny Balwani. Both have denied any wrongdoing, blah, blah, blah. So basically she was like, yeah, can we just not talk about that stuff? And the judge was like, yeah, no. no. It's pertinent to your con- to your whole story stupid thank you now the other thing this is a different article how this... fucking self-centered and entitled are you that you think that that's just the way you're gonna get out of it she's a rich white woman hmm. so this is another article um because i knew that they were fighting over this as well this is from august 20th um from what's this website bloomberg.com by joel uh rosenblatt of all the high-profile witnesses set for Elizabeth Holmes' criminal trial, uh, King, Sh- King Shuck Das isn't exactly a key player in the collapse of Theranos Incorporated. But Das poses enough risk for her defense for her defense that her lawyer said his testimony threatens to upend the proceeding. Das, a former lab director for Theranos, Said, has said he told Holmes, who founded the company and was its chief executive officer, that its blood testing equipment was deficient and not reliable. Time somebody fucking said it. Right. Court filing show. He's one of the few high-level scientists positioned to explain to jurors how aware Holmes was of problems with the machine, even as she continued to promote them. Because if you remember, we talked about this a lot in our series. When I had that situation at our old job where they, uh, all these upper level managers pulled me into a room trying to convince me to commit fraud for them, right? right? And I said, put it in writing because the second we get caught, y'all are going to throw me under the fucking bus and And I'm not having it. And that's what they do. So they're they're pretty much trying that same thing saying, oh, well, we trusted our lab techs and our scientists. We didn't know because we're not scientists and we're not lab techs, but so how could we know? To, to say otherwise, exactly. she was told. Exactly. She was told. And you know what? You can't put blood into a magic machine that Mm-mm. some some mall rat from 1997, you know, yeah. made up in her in her mind. No. Um, and, and magically diagnose or misdiagnose right all these people and think you can get away with it no it's not no but on friday lawyers for holmes argued in court that dawes was added too late to the prosecution's list of witnesses for trial that starts in 11 days the defense said in court filings it wasn't aware until last month that the government might rely on his expert opinion about assays 
We talked about that. Assay is a fancy word right. for blood test. Um, that didn't that didn't allow enough time to prepare a response at tr- at trial. Her attorney said prosecutors argued Doss is providing testimony about facts and events in the case, not expert opinion. So honestly, I think I think the argument is you don't want him to testify because you don't have time to vet him, right? Right. But it's not about vetting his quote unquote story. It's he. What he is coming to present, it sounds like, are black and white, knowable, provable facts. And they don't have enough time to put a spin on it. Mm-hmm. Pretty much that's what they're saying. That's what it is. So in response, U.S. Judge, District Judge Edward Davila said he's inclined to let Doss testify. I, haven't qu- I don't think they've, a decision's been firmly uh-huh. handed down on it. But he says, so long as he doesn't veer into subjects that get too technical for jurors. The judge suggested the subject may be, quote, something we're going to have to police as the witness testifies. So basically, he's he's going to allow it, it sounds like. Right. But they're gonna, he's going to be really open to objections if they feel like that it's, it's going off, yeah, yeah, off topic yeah. or not down the road they want to. Uh, Lance Wade, a lawyer for Holmes, warned against, quote, kicking this can down the road, suggesting that dealing with Doss's testimony in the middle of trial poses possible problems of fairness that could derail it. Quote, my concern is if we wait to and defer on this, we're not going to draw the lines the way we think is appropriate. Oh, the way you think is appropriate, huh? Okay. So because what what this bonkers ass defense team thinks is, quote, appropriate is letting this poor white woman go with an apology and a million dollar check. Like they seem to really believe that if she can just pay her way out of it. Mm. It, it but it, that's not going to teach her ass anything because you know what? No, no, She'll no. no. Come he, up with... This team truly seems to think that the government owes her money for inconveniencing her. Like that's how they're all these motions of you shouldn't be able to talk about motive and you shouldn't be able to talk about results and you shouldn't be able to talk about like the case. I feel like if if so, if, I kind of feel like she's like the Bernie Madoff of the medical world. Totally. Right? And had they not locked Bernie Madoff up mm-hmm. when they did, he would have come up with a new Ponzi scheme. If they would have just given Absolutely. him a slap on the wrist mm-hmm. and just said, oh, don't do that again, Bern, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and kept it moving. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the same thing will happen with her in five years time. You'll hear about another miraculous machine or or some What's sort of. What's the fucking of, first thing that can, Jeff Skilling did when he got out of jail after 15 years or however the fuck long he was in jail? He immediately started like is right. trying to get back into the energy industry. Right. And it's like, right. no. It's, it's not going to It's not gonna do her any good. It's not going to do anybody else any good. Because the bitch sells pipe dreams. Like, of course. Honestly. Like, she's, she's, she's a hustler. She is a hustler. She's a white-collar hustler. Absolutely. I just can't believe that any... Did anybody... I mean, are there any accredited physicians or anybody who studies medicine or, you know, has three brain cells that aren't fighting each other that fell for this? Like, I would... I would it's sad how many people did. I don't know. It really bothers me because this bitch got away with this. She hasn't gotten away with it yet. Well, I still think she will, I mean, the, personally. The, you know, yeah, I, don't, I, I still think that she will really because it... Absolutely. Really what they're going to come down to was, well, who did it really hurt? I don't... You I don't know? actually think that I, we had talked about this in one of our previous episodes that I think she's going to get off simply because it's complicated. Right. Yeah. And if you look, I didn't realize that they're estimating the length of the trial mm-hmm. is going to be four months. Wow. That's a lot. Like, that's a lot. If they're. That's some OJ shit, you know, like that's going to be like you're that's going to. Probably very much confused the jurors because it is confusing. Yeah. Like, this is a wild ass story. And the only reason we've gotten as far as we have with it is we had the book and the podcast right. and the documentary, right. and I was obsessed with it. But these people aren't going to have that laid out no. for them. No, so they have to go over all of that. This is going to be. It's going to be tedious. Of course. It's be tedious. That's what. And I have a feeling they're just going to check the fuck yeah. out. Yeah. Um, okay. Because really, in his... honestly, I don't think there is a way that you can present this to people who know nothing of it without going into detail so that they understand 
mm-hmm. just exactly how in depth it was as far as like the lengths she went to yeah to to pull this off yeah because if you don't understand the first part you're not going to understand the middle and you're going to be lost at the end exactly so yeah. so according to court filings Doss said he was told by Holmes when he was hired in 2015 that his job would include responding to findings in an audit of the company's Edison blood testing machine by the Centers for Med- Medicare and Medicaid Services. Doss said he was told the CMS audit had uncovered, quote, a few irregularities. Oh, just a few. Just a couple. But that specific details weren't discussed, according to court filings. The findings by the CMS were grave enough that the regulator banned Holmes from running a lab company for two years. Ooh. Two years. I know. But she can put it in, in somebody else's name. and Thank you. You know. Or Theranos also had to retract or correct the results of tens of thousands of medical tests. In his own review of Theranos' data... Doss, the guy they want to testify, yeah. quote, concluded the Edison device did not perform well and the accuracy and precision did not meet the level needed for clinical testing. Court records show Doss told the government that, quote, even using a fairly low bar, none of the Edison tests passed an acceptable level and that the CMS inspectors were 100 percent correct with their deficiency findings. He was laid off at Theranos in 2018, the year the company ceased operations. So, I think he's going to testify, too. Uh-huh. And he's going to be an interesting one to watch. I wonder if they're televising it anywhere. I should look that up. But one last article here. This was the doozy of the, the doozy. week. The doozy. Um, okay. So, this is from August 28th uh, from NPR. And this is by Bobby Allen. So, the article says, this is wild. This is wild. Elizabeth Holmes, the founder of blood testing company Theranos, plans to defend herself at her federal fraud trial starting next week by arguing that her boyfriend, who was an executive at the company, emotionally and sexually abused her, impairing her state of mind at the time of the alleged crimes, according to the newly unsealed legal filings in her case. I fucking hate these people. Don't you? You know... Y'all should have seen Tanya's face. As soon as I said it, Tanya was just like, oh my god. Don't, mm, yeah. you know what? Don't Fuck hop this on. Bitch. Don't hop on the fucking Me Too bandwagon because you think it's going to get your ass out the water now. Don't do it because nope. it makes it harder for the women and the men who really have had these fucking things happen. Mm-hmm. It makes it harder for them to be believed and to come forward when they are. And it's so rare for me, like especially since me too but even before that point yeah even before like yeah. The, if if somebody's making an allegation i want to give them the benefit of the doubt i really do but this bitch I, right right and i believe everybody until the evidence proves otherwise unless somebody comes right out with a you know whatever showing look this person did not do this and i believe right. i believe men and women children anybody who comes forward first and foremost no mm-hmm. questions asked this bitch though but this bitch you can't, like, now all of a sudden you're a victim. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden you're a victim. Mm-hmm. But it seems like you didn't bring this up until it became something. Convenient. Right, that was convenient and a way for you to, to like, get your ass out the water. You mm-hmm. know? Like, for you yeah. to get your, you, you, you want to be taken out the frying pan. And the way you can do that is mm-hmm. to throw this pers- person under the bus. And, and make it so that, you know, they're the ones in the hot seat. Or this is why I did that. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, yeah. I just, I don't... It's wild. I don't fucking buy it from this bitch. No, I, really I don't buy anything don't. she says. I really don't. And I, I recognize that we could be, you know, some people could come after us. You know, you can't pick and choose, you know, if you're no, going to you say... Can't. You cannot pick and choose. No, but, but at the same when time... When the only time this comes out is in order to... It's part of your defense. Mm-hmm. This late in the game. Mm-hmm. And you remember her first defense, we talked about this in the last episode, where we didn't... We didn't cover it. I didn't bring it up in our deep dive session, mm-hmm. but 
one of their tactics when John Kerry Rue started writing articles about this, one of the ways they wanted to respond or she wanted to respond was by revealing that she had been sexually assaulted in college and portray Carrie Rue as a misogynist. Right. So now every time something bad happens to her, it's because somebody assaulted her or had her under their thumb or, or whatever. You know what? Woman the fuck up. Just uh, no. And wasn't she fucking around with that guy anyways? Sonny Balwani? Yeah. 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 They so, were, they were I mean, a couple. I'm not saying that that can't happen. They were don't a get secret me wrong. couple. Right, right. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that somebody who you're involved with cannot sexually. Of course. Uh, you know, cannot do something to you so fucking disgusting. Right. Um, or have you in a situation like she's claiming. It, mm-hmm. it definitely can happen. Mm-hmm. But this is like her, what, second, third, whatever defense that she's come up with now. Oh, now, you know, okay. Well, that's honestly one of the things I wanted to to talk about. And there's more to this article. We'll get back to it, but we'll pause here and talk about this. I feel like her defense team was throwing everything but the kitchen sink at trying to exclude as much data and hard facts and even the not hard facts, like just the, customer experience questions like they threw everything but the kitchen sink at the court to try to figure out what they could get excluded right and the fact that they've gotten very little excluded i think i find it interesting that their argument to the public has been well it did work and and the government is just wrong Right. But now that it's down to the wire and they know that it's they're going to get fucking laughed out of the courtroom if they try to say that this that this worked, they will be laughed out of the courtroom. So now we're at this. If this was the defense before, uh-huh. if I'm trying to figure, I'm not articulating this very well, if the reason why you did these things is because you were sexually and emotionally and physically abused why did was your initial defense Something that this else. worked right 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 and now that you see that none of this that 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 there's so much evidence to to throw that defense off yeah now we're going to come up with a different defense yeah and now we're going to okay well so that wasn't completely the whole thing and now we're going to come up with this and now we're going to you know you sound like a cheating husband and don't get me wrong and this is just my opinion, allegedly, not stating this as fact, but um, don't get me wrong. Do I think that Sonny Balwani could be abusive? Oh, God, of yes. Of course, yes. He was like the douche of the century. Yeah, I'm absolutely. not saying that, um, oh, he would never. Right, yeah, right. Not would. saying that at all. Not saying that at all. But for her to use it as her defense, mm-hmm. one of many. Yeah. One of many defenses. Mm-hmm. Well, I did it for this. I did it because of that. No, it worked. I did this. I did that. For it to be one of many defenses, mm-hmm. to me, it just seems... She's throwing She's throwing she's anything just, at the wall to see what sticks. Right, right. That and really is what they're whatever doing. Whatever somebody will believe, then maybe that one juror will have, well, she was a victim, or this and look, little she's man. And look, she's a new mom. This. Right, right. Oh, and I called it. I knew it. I knew when she went to court, I was like, how much you want to bet? She still shows up in a maternity like outfit, even though she's not pregnant anymore. Yeah. To ba- to make sure that it's highlighted. Sure as fuck. I saw that blue dress. Yeah. And you can see her belly mm-hmm. like right after she just had this of baby. Course. She's so disgusting. She really is. Okay. So let's get back to the article here. Okay. And documents released early Saturday. Holmes is, this was last Saturday. Uh-huh. Holmes's legal strategy for the first time outlined by lawyers involved in the case. She intends to pin the blame on Ramesh Sunny Belwani, her former boyfriend and one-time top Theranos executive who has been charged in a separate fraud trial set to take place next year. Holmes is likely to take the stand. Holmes is going to testify. Against him. More, well, no, in her defense. In her defense. Because they're two separate trials. They split it up. Right. Because she's... You know, she wants to be able to blame him. So who's he going to blame? Probably her. 
<laughs> Especially if she's convicted, they're going to be like, well, you already got somebody. Do you really need me, too? Do you really think it's going to be me? Yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> of course not. It. Holmes is likely to take the stand and testify at her trial, according to her attorneys, in the submission to the court. The bombshell revelations come on the eve of the trial of Holmes, who stands accused of defrauding patients and investors in operating Theranos. The new court papers related to legal arguments over whether Balwani should be tried separately or with Holmes disclose the degree to which Holmes is preparing to argue that Balwani controlled, manipulated, and abused her. In particular, Holmes is set to describe a trial how Balwani controlled how she ate, how she dressed, and with whom she spoke, according to a filing. I don't believe that for a single second, especially what she's wearing um, because of the te- of the information given by our favorite Anna, um, the transgender lady. Oh, yeah, yeah. You remember because she she worked at Apple and Holmes was fascinated by Steve Jobs and asked all these questions. I don't believe this. No. I don't believe this for a second. No. No. Um, Holmes intends to say that Balwani monitored her calls, text messages, and emails, and that he was physically violent, throwing hard, sharp objects at her. The court papers also revealed that Holmes is set to accuse Balwani of sexual abuse. This pattern of abuse and coercive... This pattern of abuse and coercive control continued over the approximately decade-long duration of Ms. Holmes and Mr. Balwani's relationship, including during the period of the charged conspiracies, wrote lawyer for Elizabeth Holmes in a filing. Holmes's lawyer intend to call psychologist Mindy Mechanic, who we talked about right. before. Um, blah, 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 blah. In the filings, Balwani's lawyer, Jeffrey Coppersmith, called Holmes's allegations salacious and inflammatory. <laughs> No. Salacious. Salacious. Uh, Ms. Holmes' allegations are deeply offensive to Mr. Balwani, devastating personally to him, Coppersmith wrote. Oh, you know what was devastating to people? Yeah. Thinking they were either dying or thinking they were perfectly healthy when they weren't. Right. Holmes plans to argue that as a result of the alleged abuse, she has several mental health conditions including intimate partner abuse syndrome, which I've never heard of, post-traumatic stress disorder, and depression. The abuse claims related to the fraud charge charges because she is expected to argue that Balwani's actions were equivalent to, quote, dominating her and erasing her capacity to make decisions, including her ability to, quote, deceive her victims, the court papers say. Holmes will not be presenting an insanity defense, according to her lawyers, in the new documents. Instead, Holmes' legal team wrote that she will be demonstrating a, quote, defense of a mental condition bearing on guilt that was the result of partner abuse and that impacted her, quote, state of mind at the time of the alleged crimes. Jury selection in Holmes' trial begins. One major question going into the proceeding has been whether Holmes will take the witness stand herself and testify directly to jurors. In the filings unsealed Saturday, they provided an answer. Ms. Holmes is likely to testify herself to the reasons why she believed, relied on, and deferred to Mr. Balwani. So, that they did jury selection. Apparently, they released a whole bunch of jurors uh, because they haven't been vaccinated. Uh-huh. And they were like, no, you have to be vaccinated. But that was kind of the only thing about the jury selection i don't really know how they ended up with like the questions and stuff you remember we were talking about that super long questionnaire yeah yeah no i yeah i remember what you were saying about the the questionnaire thing um i just i find some of this i don't know where she's saying that this is why she acted this way and this Mm -hmm. is why she she's so so if you're a if you're a victim of abuse, okay, or mm-hmm. a survivor, I should say, of any sort of sexual, mental, physical abuse, mm-hmm. then are you, is she saying in turn, re- more prone to not just being manipulated by another person, mm-hmm. but by you then manipulating people yeah. and scamming people? Like, mm-hmm. should I be a scammer now? Yeah. And I mean, honestly, the whole thing about... Oh, he was monitoring her text messages and emails and blah, 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 blah. Bitch, we know enough from that book that you were stalking your employees. Like, if you remember, we talked about every email that was sent in that place. Sonny was blind copied on and nobody knew it. So he would respond to emails that he was not on. And apparently they were sent to her, too. So you're doing it. You can't. I don't know. The whole thing, this whole victim shit is... No, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's a bullshit defense. It really is. But honestly, a part of me is 
and I know this may sound weird, but because this is their defense, it makes me a little hopeful. Because it means they don't have a defense. They don't have a defense. Yeah, they just true. don't have one. Have... And if they're desperate enough to be throwing this out, I'm hoping that means they know that they're dead in the water. I really am. I mean, it just kills me that this lady scammed all these people and mm-hmm. caused all these issues and everything else. And her defense is, oh, look at me. I'm a victim. Right. Mm-hmm. But then you have somebody who who was, you know, what? God, I forget the lady's name who who killed her, her captor, who who was sexually abusing her mm-hmm. all for all that time. And they put her ass in prison. Yeah. You know, I mean, that just shows you. Yeah. The double sidedness. It really is. You know, the, it very much is the double standard because mm-hmm. she could have very well killed people. We don't know if she did or not. Oh, no, there there are people that have filed lawsuits basically saying because the blood test said I was fine, but really I was in heart failure. It could have prevented this this heart attack that I had had I gotten the right. And I guarantee you somebody did. I guarantee you somebody did. Yeah, yeah. it's it's ridiculous. Voluntary or involuntary. It was still a murder. Yeah. And so she should be brought up on that charge, too. Thank you. Yeah, that's just me. So we will keep an eye on the Elizabeth Holmes story. But in the meantime, because we we don't want to leave you guys without some of your funny stories that we love. All right. So this is from Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Jeff said that he listened to our episode where we were talking about how rude people were uh-huh. to restaurant workers. Yeah. And he had this experience that he was like, oh, this is awesome. Okay. So, I work at a restaurant in a resort hotel that has roughly a 400-person occupancy post-health crisis. And to say I've been getting burnt out is an understatement to the nth degree. After a rough Friday and Saturday, 50-plus 50 uh, 50 minute ticket items, an hour-long wait list, and just a complete dumpster fire start to finish, I had absolutely no desire to go in to work yesterday. My faith in humanity was decimated by that one day. But I did go into work, and holy shit, was it the best decision I've made this year. The last table of the night was a 22-top youth basketball team with eight adults. I was already pissed, thinking they'd make a mess and have a million split tickets. Then an angel from the walk-in sky gods blessed me with their presence. Oh. All one ticket. All the children were perfectly behaved. Everyone was nice, patient. Food came out right. I thought I was having a stroke or another work dream. Then this angel of a man who was taking care of the tab tipped me $1,200 on top of the $240 required gratuity because of the size of the party. I have never in my life cried from happiness at work. Sad cry? Yes. Angry cry? Yes. Abso-fucking-lutely. But never happy cry. This man gave me over $1,400 and could not have been nicer. And I almost called out. My faith in humanity is restored and my eyes are puffy from crying to think I was dreading about coming in to to work. And I almost called out. Oh, that's so sweet. I love like, guys, be nice to people, especially restaurant workers right now. I don't know what the fuck the issue is. You don't have to be a dick to everybody. No, you You really really don't. don't. It's just not required. No, it is not. It is not. So I figured we would end on a nice, happy story. Yes, that's so nice. That Since we're so going to be nice. talking to and the... And I love it whenever I'm listening to people and, like, on my team or whatever, I'm live monitoring them, and mm-hmm. they'll be, the guest will be like, oh, my God, you're the nicest person I ever talked to, and yeah. can I give you a tip? And <laughs> they're just like, no, I'm sorry, we don't take tips. Or, yeah. you know, oh, well, if I give a tip... Because I'm not actually in you. the restaurant. <laughs> right, you know, and they're just like, no, I'm sorry, you know, I'm just doing my job, you know, oh. and they just kind of have to suck it up, so I try to send them, like, kudos and give them a shout out and stuff Mm -hmm. but it's so nice when you hear that because it's such the it's not the norm yeah to hear like a a customer in a restaurant be like hey this person fucking awesome yeah and a lot of times i'll get like tomorrow when i go in i know i have a couple that i have to listen to and my agents were just like hey can you listen to this call the guest said that I was the best person they've ever spoken to. Aww. Or, you know, this person gave me kudos. Can you listen to it and tell me if I did good? Yeah. You know? And I'm just like, yeah, whenever they do good that. Job. you know, that's, that's so rare to find these days. Right. That's so awesome, though. That story made me really, Yay. really happy. So I really wanted to close out our, our Elizabeth Holmes nonsense. 
Yeah, on that. So. Yeah. And I also, not to bring everybody down a little bit, but I do want to give a shout out to my Uncle David. Aww. He loved the podcast. He yeah. listened to it all the time. Hmm. You were, He just thought you were just the funniest person. <laughs> he was so funny. And unfortunately, he passed away this morning from Sad. bladder cancer or gallbladder cancer. Um, it was very, he's the baby. He's the youngest of all my mom's siblings. Is she going? No, no, no. Well, he donated his body to science. Oh. So the first thing they're going to do is do all that stuff. And then we'll she, get, yeah. a, and then we'll get the yeah. ashes. Yeah. So I, but honestly, my mom isn't well enough to travel. She just had that surgery on her hand. Right. She's got to have surgery on the other one. Like she's not really. It's just been a real shitty couple of weeks. It like, really it has really been. It really has. Like. It's been know, nonstop I shit mean, show. And I'm just over it. I yeah. really, really am. And I think I'm starting to get a migraine because I see jagged lines. Oh, yeah. So okay. We'll wrap me. this up. All right. So come oh, back no. for, thank you to all of our new listeners with the Theranos sto- stories. We hope you enjoy it. We're going to keep doing updates. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all that fun stuff. And uh, make sure to send your stories to Q's and Cucumber at Yahoo.com. Yeah. And you may hear them. So, until next time, I'm Lara Mack. And I'm Tanya Edwards. Love your faces. Smooches. Like what you hear? Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcasting platform. And follow us on our Facebook page by searching Q is in Cucumber. Don't forget to check out our other show, hosted by me and Jessica James, called The Parent Memoirs. And we want to hear from you. Share your stories by emailing us at q is in cucumber at yahoo.com and you might just hear your stories on a future episode love your faces this call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance